everybody, it's Michael Dunaway. I'm the film editor with Paste Magazine. We're here at the Sennheiser Plus Paste Interactive Studio and Lounge, South by Southwest 2013, day three of three. And uh, the uh, stage just got an awful lot prettier because we're here with <laughs> Trieste you. Dunn. Thank the, you, hello. This, the star of Loves Her Gun, which I will probably refer to as Girl Loves Her Gun before the interview is over. It's a better title. <laughs> I should have been named that. <laughs> uh, she also uh, is the star of the television show Banshee and uh, was in one of my favorite movies of the 2000s, United 93. Oh, but thank you. we are going to talk about Loves Her Gun, which was shot right here in Austin, Texas. It was. It tell was. Us, tell us about, uh, about Jeff, the director and writer, and shooting here and Austin culture as it relates to, I mean, it has to do with Texas culture, this movie. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, Tell you about Jeff. Uh, Jeff Marslett, you can see him around Austin wearing a big black cowboy hat. <laughs> He's very <laughs> Texas. And initially when he sent me this outline, I had met him at other festivals. We had some films screening at the same time during the, do, like doing the same festival circuit. Yeah. And so I just kept seeing him on and off at different festivals and we just really wanted to work together. So he sent me this outline on Facebook actually. And um, I was so excited to do it. I just really wanted to do everything that Ali does in the movie. Ali's my character's name. Um, and then he sent me a Facebook message like two weeks later and he said he would be, he wanted to improvise all the dialogue and that we'd be going off the outline but all the dialogue was going to be improvised and I just immediately got so terrified but I'd already said I'd do it <laughs> and I still did want to do it but I was just like, am I going to be the worst in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> do you not have an extensive background in improv? No, I do. I went to acting school so okay. we did a lot of nerdy yeah. stuff like, you know, I, you know, improv classes. We had to do masks. We had to do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But this felt different because it was really plot driven and like there was a really tight story structure. So it wasn't like most improv movies where you can just have these kind of long um, scenes about relationships and they can just meander. It, it felt like it needed to be really driven into the point mm -hmm. and it couldn't be so natural. Like it had to be. It had to be specific. Uh, so that's what made me nervous. It was also really high stakes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like improvising. Improvising fighting scenes and improvising the, improvising scenes like that is just tough. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now, where are you from originally? Utah. Utah, okay. Yeah. So you're no stranger to Western culture. Uh, <laughs> Western culture, and specifically Texas culture, is a, is really one of the main subjects of this movie with, with yeah. the woman coming down to Texas. Mm -hmm. Tell us about um, sort of how your background in Utah kind of prepared you to sort of understand what was going on in the environment of the movie and the world of the movie in the, okay, film nerd alert, terroir of the movie. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I haven't heard that word for a long time. Um, you know, Utah, that's, inter that's an interesting question. I think it's funny because I'm from Utah and they have really lenient gun laws. Yep. Um, but I didn't grow up doing anything with like I, they weren't a part of my my family's my family didn't use them or talk about them or I never shot guns yeah. until we made this movie. Yeah. So I feel like I was kind of I was really sheltered from that and yeah. I, and I've also lived in New York for the last ten years. Yeah. So I I kind of come from like a New York point of view about the whole gun thing. So when I got to Texas and and realized how how easy it was to do all of this, that was that was kind of new to me. But yeah. also I think meeting so many Texans who it's just a part of their everyday lives, yeah. guns, and, and especially like our gun advisor, his name's Norm, I'm gonna mess up his last name, Camposano or something. He's from, he's from Austin and he just knows everything. And he was there every day with us, you know, telling us basically how to use these things. But the first yeah. gun I shot, and we shot live ammo in the movie, wow. was while Amy Bench, our DP was shooting me she was shooting me shooting a gun for my first time and my wow. hand was shaking wow. so I mean it felt wrong it felt dangerous and it was crazy but they were actually the most satisfying days on set because wow. it's fun like it's fun shooting guns you know and I get why people are really seduced by them it's powerful it's There's... powerful it makes you feel like a badass it makes yeah. you feel a lot of things yeah. and um, you know I left the experience being a lot more open-minded about them yeah. I still wouldn't use one as my own tool for self-defense but yeah. I was I went into it being like pretty anti-gun and I yeah. think leaving the leaving the process I'm a little bit more I understand like the nuances of the argument a little bit better you know I think that's really valuable it was, it was not a political show but uh, yeah. I, do, it, I do think it's really valuable when you can sort of have an experience that makes you see the uh, where the other side is coming exactly. from even if you don't end up agreeing with them yeah. you know that's really a cool yeah. thing well, last question, uh, you know, we're here in the Sennheiser Lounge, and so we're talking to everyone, all the filmmakers and, and uh, actors, about sort of sound in movie. And 
so oh, sound yeah. in film. So tell me, is there is there anything special that you want to talk about about the sound design of this film, or anything in another film or show that you've worked on, or just general thoughts about how important sound design is it's in so film important. or any of that? It's so important. I remember seeing a film recently in a theater. I think I saw Beast of the Southern Wild in a theater in Atlanta where the sound was amazing. The theater was amazing. And then I loved it. So, I mean, it, I was like convulsing. I was crying so much. I, it was uncontrollable sobbing yeah. by the end of the film. And yeah. then I saw it in Charlotte, North Carolina at a really tiny theater, kind of older. The sound wasn't as good. Yeah. And I remember going, it's weird. Like the color seemed off in the film. Like the, wow. the images seemed off, but I didn't notice it was the sound. And then somebody told me the sound wasn't as good. And that's why my experience watching it wasn't as powerful. And today, we had a screening today. I didn't make it because I couldn't get a cab there. But um, supposedly it was the better theater and better sound, better projection. And they said people left crying today. Wow. So I think it's so important. But like you don't you don't register it as sound, but yeah. it is sound. You register it as just the movie's not as good. The images aren't as clean. You, reg you register it differently, but. It's so interesting that you use the word color too, because that's completely, there's such a it's, link between yeah. the way we process sound and the way we process color. It's, it's, a, it's bizarre. Brilliant. Like, it's bizarre, and you would never put it together, but... It's, it's brilliant. Well, Trias Dunn, brilliant actress and brilliant neuroscientist, apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody... <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming back with us to the Sennheiser Plus Paste Interactive Studio Plus Lounge. We'll be here for about a half a more day, so we've got a few more great interviews for you. Keep tuning in. This is Michael Dunaway, film editor with Paste Magazine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so yeah. much.